Welcome, everybody. Uh, today's topic is about preload strategies, and it's to the theme, step in time, step in time. If you like Mary Poppins, well, so do I. So my name's John Papa, and I want to talk to you about something I really love, and that's really good user experience. So when you're building applications, people say that it's impossible to create really great user experiences because you always have to choose between two impossible choices. Well, even the impossible is possible. So we're going to talk about how we can make our applications faster or snappier in step in time. It all starts with a little town called Eager and Lazy Loading. Now, Eager and Lazy Loading, we all know about these, right? We start out and Eager is like, all right, the users are going to wait for everything to load up front. If you have a large application, they're going to wait for everything to come up front. And the time to their first interaction with your app is not going to be so great. Now, lazy loading, it's the promised land, right? We've been hearing about this for years. We have to use lazy loading. And users are going to wait until they navigate to a new route. The upside with lazy loading is that they get to get in there, see the first screen right away, and then in the background, when you click on a link to go somewhere, the user says, okay, I'm going to go to this other screen. It's going to make them wait to get that other route and load it. But it's still a wait. So it's either wait for everything up front, and then it's really fast. That's eager loading. Or lazy loading is make it really fast to load first and then just load each thing on demand as they click on it. Well, these are two impossible choices. What I'm here to say is that there's a nice in-between. And this is preloading strategies. This is where you control the entire user experience. Now, it's not as simple as just pressing a button, although maybe it will be when we're done today. But what you do is you control the experience by defining what is the user behavior you want. So we're going to improve that user experience by loading the JavaScript bundles just when the users need it. So it's just in time or step in time. So how does this work? So here's how preloading works. Imagine that the eagerly loaded content comes up front, but after so much time on a network, you're going to see the preloaded, lazy loaded JavaScript come later. So here what's happening is the main application loads up front and after about 10 seconds or so, then the application is usable that's the time to the first interactive, and then the preloaded JavaScript comes afterwards. What this means is that your users can get the site quickly up front, they can use it, and then go to other routes, and by the time they go to another route, all that code is already preloaded. Now, why is it taking 10 seconds here? How many of you here actually have a super fast network all the time? Yeah, I don't either. Like conference network, or sometimes if you live out in uh, non-urban areas, or sometimes you're just, your ISP doesn't work so great. Or maybe you work someplace, there's a lot of concrete, and you can't get good signals. There's a lot of reasons why people might not get fast Wi-Fi. This is when it really shows up, like it does here in this graph. Let's take a look at running a local network here, and I'm simulating a slower speed. So here's the application that we're going to see today. Notice it's taking a while to load. It's even got some of one-second latency. Now here's all the eagerly loaded content that's coming. Now we're emulating like 3G happening right now. And then suddenly around 11 seconds, the content is loaded and then the preloaded stuff comes afterwards. So now if I click on admin or villains and other things, those particular routes can get loaded and the users can go to those really snappy. So what happens when you navigate to a route? Let's break this down so you can do this yourselves. First, the router is going to make a network request to download a module. So makes sense, right? You click on a route. And then what happens is, inside the router, it says, do I have this lazy loaded bundle currently in the browser? So it's going to check to see that. And if it doesn't, it's going to fetch that bundle. And once it fetches that bundle, then it's going to cause the users to wait, right? So depending upon the speed of your app, the speed of your network, how you've preloaded, that wait time could be a little bit different. It could be small or it could be big. So we're going to look at different preloading strategies. Now, there's a couple that come out of the box with Angular. The default behavior is preload nothing. That's our just basically work with lazy loading and don't preload anything. Only get the JavaScript as the user clicks on a route. There's another much more aggressive preload. This one sounds great at first. It says get everything up front. It's extremely aggressive, but it also increases your network traffic and the usage. So think about this. If you've got an application with a lot of modules and they're large and you're on a slow network for your users, if your users have preload all, 
you're actually going to be occupying the network, loading all that JavaScript while they're trying to use your application. And they might not even need all those bundles loaded. So you might want something in between. And that's where we're here to talk about is custom preload strategies. This is how you can control that customer experience. So the way preloading works is like this. After each navigation, the router is going to check to see, hey, do you have any unloaded modules? If there's any unloaded modules, then it's going to say, all right, should any of them be preloaded? And that's based on your logic. So the first step happens automatically. And then it's going to check your logic to see, should any of them be preloaded? And if so, it'll actually preload those modules. So you can decide which ones you want to put up front and which ones you don't. And the place that you define this and set it up in your app, if you're not familiar with it, is right here. Oops. So here we've got preloading nothing. That's nothing at all. That's the default. So inside your router modules for root, you pass this second option. There's routes and then a preloading strategy. That says basically don't preload. That's the default. Or you can preload all things. You get a preload. You get a bundle. And you get a bundle. This is the other option. It's the other side of the extreme. That's where we're going to do everything for our customization. So should you preload everything up front? Maybe. It's something you have to think about. But if you don't want to, there's a couple options. Now, I'm going to show you three options because I like the rule of three. Three different ways to preload your JavaScript bundles. First, you can opt in or opt out. You can basically pick, here's a bundle I want to preload, here's a bundle I don't. So you might have a customer orders app and say, I want the customer site that bundle to be preloaded, but I might not want the admin piece to be preloaded. So you can define this at design time. Another way to do it is to check the network speed. I've worked on many large apps where sometimes they're in a place where they know they're going to have good speed, and other times they're out on mobile devices, or they're on cell phones, or they're having cell devices tethered to computers. If that's the case, you might want to check the network speed before you preload. Why? Do you really want to, on a 3G network, download something that might be one meg. Maybe not. Another option is to predict the preloading strategy based on the user's behaviors. For example, if somebody goes to a page or to a shopping site, they're looking for Lysol wipes because they want to clean everything in their house. They want to go find those. They go to the shopping site. They look for the search page. Once they get to the search page, you know with a fair amount of certainty, based upon analytics, that they're going to press search, and that's going to bring them to search results. And then once they find the thing they want, they're going to go to the search details. So if those search results and details are in a different lazy loaded module, couldn't you predict that if they get to the search page that you could automatically go ahead and load that? There's certain behaviors we can look for, and I'll show you how you can look for these and how you can code them. So how do you create these custom preload strategies? Before we get into the demo, we have to understand that we got to implement an interface. So Angular gives us this preload strategy interface. We write our own logic that basically defines exactly what we want it to do because we control it. And then we just apply it to the routes. So in a custom strategy, we'll implement it. We can set logic up for that function, and then we can apply it. Super easy, three steps, and it's time for a demo. Okay, so we're inside of our code base, and we're going to see this a couple times today, and I'll share all the code with you later. Right now, I've got three strategies in my application. We're going to take a look first at this opt-in strategy. Here's how you define it. So in my opt-in strategy, I've defined this opt preload strategy here. It's a class. It's a service provided in the root, and it implements the preload strategy interface. And then it defines a single function called preload, which accepts two arguments, the route and the load. The route is what's given to you, so you can then determine what route did I get. And then the load is a function that you can run if you want it to preload. And if you don't, you can just pass empty, which comes out of RxJS. So here, we're checking to see with optional chaining. <laughs> is an optional chaining suite? With optional chaining, I can check to see if I've got a route, which you should, and it's got a data property with a preload property that is also truthy. So even if, if it has the property and set the false, it wouldn't work. But if it has the property with any value in it that's basically not uh, false or falsy, it's going to load that route. So what does that look like? 
Well, let's look and see where this opt-in preload strategy is used. We can go find all references. Here we can see app module is using it. So we'll flip over to app module. Now inside the app module, we can scroll to the bottom. We can see down here inside of our route, we can set the preloading strategy right there. Now I'm going to set that to opt-in preload strategy. Now, if I get rid of some of these comments and I put these in so you can look at them afterwards, we'll just take them away for now. You can see that this is just inside of the router module in my application. Very simple. Preload strategy, opt-in preload. Now all I have to do is go to my router file. And in my router file, I set up which routes I want to preload. In this case, I'm saying heroes should preload, villains should preload. I want the admin to preload. I'm setting them all up. Let's go ahead and turn off the villains. Actually, we'll just delete the line of code entirely. And we'll do it this way. So I get heroes, villains, admin, and we're not doing the about. So we run over to the application itself. And we'll pull that over here. Now I'm going to reload the application, and we're going to go inside the network tab. We'll drag over the tools and look at what's happening. Now, first thing I like to do is I'd like to type in module up inside the network tab. That's going to filter all my network traffic. And then I'm going to refresh over here on the left-hand side the page. And you're going to see I'm getting all of my heroes bundles first. So I got the heroes bundles. That works for me. But what else did I get? Did I get any other preloads? Let's take a look. So I go back into my code here, and I can see that in my application, I've got the opt-in, and the opt-in is here. And then I go to my router, and I can see I've got my preload true for different settings. And then I got to go to my strategy and see if my strategy is actually in place. So once I've got all that, those different modules will preload when I need them to preload. The second kind of strategy that I want is going to be an on-demand preload. So on-demand is a little bit different. On-demand means that you get to decide when you're actually going to preload this stuff. And we'll get rid of some comments for now. There we go. So with on-demand, it's a little more implementation to, to code this. What I'm looking for here now is I'm going to pull in a service called my preload on-demand. Preload on-demand is a service that gives me a notification. So basically, it's listening for an observable. So I can then act upon that. Whenever somebody tells me to preload something, I'm going to run this function. It's going to listen for it. And then it's going to determine this if there's a preload check. So preload check, what does that do? It says, hey, do you have route data preload set on? And is the route and its path right here? Is that route path inside of this option that you sent? So basically, you're going to pass the path in for what you want to preload, and it's going to match it to another, uh, to what's inside the router. And if so, it's going to go ahead and preload. So it comes back and say, if I should preload, then return load. Otherwise, return empty. And that's the whole deal of it. So the strategy is super simple with this one. The real work is inside of this observable. Let's take a look at where this service exists and what it's doing. So you find all references. We can come back over into the strategy itself. And we can see we've got our strategy here. But look what's happening inside of our service. Here is our preload service, and it simply defines a subject. And that subject is implementing some options. And what are those options going to be? We can just click on it. And you can see up here, you got the route path and preload set to true by default. By default. So then I create a subject, I get the observable. And if somebody calls this function called start preload and they pass it a path, let's say they pass heroes or they pass villains, it's automatically going to then say, you know what? Go ahead and set those preload option to true for this route path and call subject next. So this, this method right here is called start preload on line 13. That is the thing that's going to kick off a preload of whatever route you want. So how do you implement this? Imagine inside your navigation, you've got a router link. And in your router link, there's my router link for heroes. When I mouse over a particular menu item, I want to preload whatever route's associated with that. So all I have to do is pass in the menu item I want. So in this case, I'm going to pass in heroes. That's going to preload that. 
here's my villains route. I want to pass in villains. And then for this one, I'll pass in admin and then about. And the code for preload bundle is down here. I just go and call my service, start preload, pass it the route path, and then it's all good to go. So to make this one work, then we just have to type in the name of that particular preload service. In this case, that's our on-demand preload strategy right here. And that comes out of our preload strategy that we used. So it's imported right there. And then if we make sure we've reloaded our page. Now, if I click on a button or I hover over different menu items, I could go ahead and preload anything that I wanted to. So that's where the things would preload for us automatically. The last one is when I have a strategy that is a little more clever about where the user is. We talked about network aware. Now, did you know that there's a navigator API that comes with the browser? Now, most modern browsers support this. In fact, almost all of them do. So you can check to see if there's a navigator connection object. And if there is, I'm doing two different checks here. I'm saying if the person has their mobile data saver option turned on, then don't bother preloading anything because I don't want to slow them down if they're trying to save data. If they're not, they're just using a good connection, then you can say, all right, what is the connections that you want to support? If they're using slow 2G or 2G, I don't want them to preload. So therefore, I'm going to return false. But if they're on 3G or 4G, I'm okay with this, and I'm going to go ahead and preload. So I'm using the network information to find out how fast is their network, and then we can go ahead and preload the content as they want it. So it's really up to you and how you implement this. And the guard logic here, it's just nice to have it because what if they're not uh, using a browser that supports this navigator that happens to be in here? So then you end up with all that. The nice thing about these three different strategies that we've seen is that you can actually mix and match those to do it any way you like. So you can run this demo at the links that I'll show you at the end, but just in hindsight here, what do we do? We've got a network aware strategy that we walked through. That's the one that checks to see the network that you have. That's really good, especially if your users might not always be on super fast Wi-Fi. You've got an on-demand. This is where you choose how it works. In this case, I'm choosing that when somebody hovers over a link or they press a button or they do a certain action on the page based upon user behavior, then I'm going to go preload that thing because then the users might get that page to come up instantly by the time they actually click or do something with it. And then there's the opt-in strategy. And that one, you can basically set a flag on the routes at design time to basically decide which ones will preload and which ones will not. So again, customizing a preload strategy, pretty simple. You decide when to do it or when not to. You can implement the interface. You define your logic. In this case, we're using the data preload to determine if you preload or not. And then you can simply add it if you get the preload option inside of your routes file. And then the network aware strategy, we've got the save data saver, and then we decide which network connections we want. I like to debug this to make sure I know which connections are popping up in my applications. But in the end, it's up to you and how you define this. And if you do this, your users are going to have a much better experience. So final tips for you all. I highly recommend that all of your applications define your preload strategy. Pick the one that you want. There's other combinations that you can choose as well. And you can grab these three that I created up from the repository that you're going to see in just a moment. And if you want to not have to worry about writing these different strategies, you can use the snippets that I have at this link. It'll actually automatically fill in different kinds of preloading strategies right out of the box for you. So if we go back and look at this real quick, let's say I had nothing in that file. If I come up here and I type in preload, you can see there's a preload network right there. There's a preloaded networking strategy. If I want to type in, uh, make the font a little smaller, I want to type in opt-in, there's the opt-in strategy. All you have to do is type in a dash preload and you'll see several different options here for preload strategies that you can use. Now, you could of course write your own custom one anytime you want. That'll work as well. And if you want to see the repository, all you have to do is go to uh, github slash john papa slash angular preload 
And there's the code that you can get for this entire thing. And I uploaded it this morning and everything is Tour of Heroes, of course. Thank you very much for coming today. And I hope that you have a good time and that you preload strategies to all your applications.